This has proved to be an extremely successful way of introducing 16-year-old students to basic differentiation, and they're always quite excited to find out about this new subject called calculus. The following usually takes up to a whole hour in the classroom, but this video is only a few minutes long. If I go a bit too fast, just keep pausing the video when required. If you go to this website and then scroll down to calculus topics to differentiation, you find that this is a series of notes you can download and this is the PowerPoint that I'm basically using. Justifying basic differentiation. I'm well aware that many teachers just give this rule, multiply by the power and reduce the power by one. This is no way to teach mathematics. Right from year 12, I've had great success with the following lesson and students really like it. In fact, it usually creates a lot of interest and they leave the room buzzing with excitement. The very basic idea of calculus is how to find the changing steepness of curves. So far, we've only dealt with the gradients of lines. So the gradient of this line is, of course, 3 over 4. Now, what do we mean by the gradient of a curve or the steepness of a curve? I'm going to move this line until it just touches the curve at P. This line is called a tangent to the curve at P. We say that the gradient of the curve at P is the gradient of the tangent at P. To estimate the gradient of the tangent at P, we use a chord, PQ. No, Q is meant to be a point very close to P, and the diagram is very much enlarged for clarity. Now, the gradient of PQ is an approximation to the gradient of the tangent at P. Here's the tangent. Clearly, the gradient of the chord PQ is greater than the gradient of the tangent. So we ask now, how can we make the approximation better? And the answer is to move Q closer and closer to P. Like this. And we can see that the gradient of PQ is getting closer and closer to the actual gradient of the tangent at P. Now we do this process using algebra. This represents the curve y equals x squared and I'm going to find the gradient at x equals 3. Now as I said before Q is actually a point very close to P but this is very much enlarged so I move along a distance h to here and that is therefore 3 plus h, and so the height of the curve at 3 is 3 squared, 9, the height of the curve at 3 plus h is 3 plus h squared. So we're looking at this triangle here, and we see that the gradient of pq is equal to 3 plus h squared minus 3 squared over h. Then we start to work out this value here. Expand the brackets. 9 minus 9 is gone and we get this. Then we factorize and h over h is 1 because h is just a small quantity. But then we say when h reduces to 0, the great, all that's left is 6. And so the gradient there is 6. Now we'll repeat the, the process at x equals 4. So this is x equals 4. The height of the curve there is 4 squared, 16. Move along a distance h. So the height of this is 4 plus h squared. So that height is 4 plus h squared minus 4 squared over h. And the gradient of pq is qt over pt, which is this again. 
multiply the brackets, and 16 minus 16 is gone, factorize, and then we examine this and we say when h is 0, or approaching 0, all that's left is 8. Now there's definitely a pattern here, and some students actually see it straight away. But a better way to see the pattern is to choose a general position x instead of specific values like x equals 3 and x equals 4. So here's the same curve, and this is a general position x, and so the height there is x squared, y equals x squared. Move along a distance h to x plus h, and the height there is x plus h squared. And then the gradient of pq is x plus h squared minus x squared over h. Now the students are already very familiar with this whole idea, and we have no problems at all going through this. Now expand the brackets, x squared minus x squared is gone, factorize next, cancel the h's out, and all that we're left with is 2x plus h, and when h reduces to 0, all that's left is 2x. Now the main symbol we use for the gradient of a curve is y dash. We've just found that the gradient of the curve y equals x squared at any point x is y dash equals 2x. Now this doesn't mean very much to most students until you point it out clearly like this. This means that for the curve y equals x squared, when x is 1, the gradient is 2 times 1. When x is 2, the gradient is 2 times 2. When x is 3, the gradient is 2 times 3 etc. like this. And when x is negative 6, the gradient is 2 times negative 6. And when x is a half, the gradient is 2 times a half, 1. Now we found a simple pattern for the curve y equals x squared, but there is also a similar pattern for any power of x. We've just done this, now we're going to look at y equals x cubed and y equals x to the 4 and use the same basic theory. All right, so this is meant to represent y equals x cubed, but the diagram is basically the same. Now, at this general position x, the height of the curve is x cubed. Move along a distance h, and we get this height is now x plus h cubed. This distance is h. And so the gradient of the curve here, or the gradient of PQ, is equal to this distance over this distance, again like this, and I need a bit more room to multiply this out. At this point, there's no sense in wasting time multiplying three brackets. I just give them this answer and they, they can check it themselves easily. So we get this, x cubed minus x cubed is gone. Then we factorize this expression and we cancel out the h's. Then we look at this and we see that when h is approaching zero, these two terms just vanish. And all we're left with is 3x squared. Now we're going to repeat this for y equals x to the 4. Then the pattern will be obvious to everybody, even if they haven't already seen it y equals x to the 4, again, same diagram. General position x, the height of the curve there is x to the power 4. Move along a distance h to x plus h, and the height of the curve there is x plus h to the power 4. And then we get the same triangle here. The gradient of pq is x plus h to the 4 minus x to the 4 over h. And then need more room again, so we do this, and I definitely give them the expansion of this, which is a bit unwieldy, as you see. This cancels. We get this expression, then we factorize an h, cancel h out, and we get this expression, and this is marvelous because we get these three terms vanishing again when h approaches zero, and all that's left is 
4x cubed. Conclusion, if y equals x squared, the gradient is 2 times x to the 1. If y equals x cubed, the gradient is 3 times x to the 2. If y equals x to the 4, the gradient is 4 times x to the 3. When, x, when x, y equals x to the 5, the gradient is 5 times x to the 4. If y equals x to the 6, the gradient is 6x to the 5, and in general, if y equals x to the n, the gradient is n times x to the n minus 1. Now, we carry on in future using a general expression for what we just did, not for a specific curve, but a general curve y equals fx. So this is now representing any curve y equals fx. At position x, the height of the curve is fx. Move along distance h. And the height of the curve now is fx plus h. And so the gradient of pq is this over this, like that. So all we do is we, whatever the equation is, we substitute the values in. And then factorize and, and see what happens when h approaches 0. Now at this early stage, I don't formally introduce the term, the limit as x approaches zero. I make this as simple as possible. 